When you're just starting in genetic genealogy, you see this list of matches and you might be wondering, what do I do with that? Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can divide up those matches into smaller groups so that you know where to research. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestor's story along the way. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Leeds Method chart and how to create one and what it will do to help your research. The first thing to understand is that the Leeds Method is a way to divide your matches into groups which correspond with each one of your grandparents. This way, whenever you have a new match or if you're actually looking at a specific match, you can know which grandparent you should be researching in order to find a more distant common ancestor. That cuts down the number of ancestral lines you have to look at. The reason why this method is so great is because one, it is quick. It can be done in about 15 minutes. Two, it's visual. You can actually see really quickly how these people group out. Next, it can be done by hand on a piece of paper or you can do it on a computer program, whether in a spreadsheet or on some other application. And finally, it can be done with data from any of the companies. All you need is a shared match list. So let's get started and learn how to make a leads chart. The first thing you want to do is you want to create a table with at least five columns and sometimes more. So let me go over to my spreadsheet and show you. Here we are with a table I've created in Google Docs and I have a column where I'm going to put the names of the matches here. And then I have, in this case, six columns that I've actually put a color on each one of them. If you want to put that color on now, you can. If not, we're going to be putting it on in the next couple of steps anyway. But this is the basic setup that you're going to need in order to create your leads method chart. So the next step that we have is we now want to list all of our second and third cousins. And most people right now are probably saying, well, how do I know whether they're my second or third cousins? You guess. But the way that you guess is by using the amount of shared DNA. So typically you're going to be looking for people that share below 400 centimorgans and above 90 centimorgans. Now you can do a little bit less than 90 centimorgans, but you usually don't want to go above 400 centimorgans because we actually want to exclude all of the first cousins and all of the first cousin once removed or first cousin twice removed because they are going to complicate our analysis and you'll see that as we're going through. There are different ways that you can get this match list. You might have to download your list of matches. You might have to manually type it in in some cases, or you might have to use a third party software that goes and grabs those matches off of the website. However you do it, all you need is you need this list of matches. Now I've anonymized all the names. And so this is a match list between somebody named Mike and all of these people. And what we can see is I've highlighted these first few red, and that is because they are known first cousins, either a first cousin or a first cousin once removed, or even a first cousin two times removed. And so I'm going to not use them for the next step, but I want to include them on there just to make sure that I'm in the right area. So the third step that we want to do now is we want to take the first match and assign a color. Now, when I say the first match, I mean those matches that aren't known first cousins or first cousins once removed. So if I go over to my spreadsheet right now, I know that these first three, Becky, Linda, and Cole, those are all first cousins or first cousins once removed. So I'm going to start with Deborah, and I'm going to go and I'm going to highlight Deborah this first maroon color, and I'm going to put an asterisk in that one so that we know that Deborah is the lead person for this group. In other words, she is the person that I'm going to be comparing everybody else to. So now we're ready to actually start forming our group, and that is with step four. What we're going to do is we're going to color all of the shared matches with that lead match. So let me pull up a shared match list between Deborah and Mike, who all this information belongs to. So here is the shared match list, and we can see that Mike and Deborah they share Becky and Sarah and Jay and EO and Estelle and on down this list. So 
back on my leads chart, I'm going to highlight each one of these also in that maroon color. So we have Becky, Becky needs to be maroon. And also we're going to find Sarah. Sarah is the next one that needs to be maroon. And then we need to find J and EO. And as we scroll down, there's J and there's EO. And then Thomas and Larry, there's Thomas and Larry. Now all of these people, they share DNA with Mike and Deborah. And now Deborah is the lead one of the group. Mike is the overall one for all of the groups. So we've got our first section done. We've found all of the shared matches for Deborah. So let's go on and see what we do next. Now the next step is that we want to find the next person that is ungrouped and we wanna match them with a new color. So let me go back to my table and see. So we have here, looks like Joe is the next one that doesn't have a color. And my next color is this teal. So I'm going to color Joe that teal and I am going to put an asterisk in that field so I know that Joe is my next lead character. Now I have Deborah as a lead character and I have Joe now as a lead character. These are the starts of my groups. So can you guess what the next step is going to be? If you're thinking that you're gonna now color the shared matches, you're right. You are going to color the shared matches. In fact, what you're going to do is you're going to continue to color shared matches for each of the next groups using the next person who doesn't have a color already. Now, I don't wanna to have to go through all of that and show you each one of those, but here is what the finished product looked like. I have my Deborah, I have Joe here, I have Mabel here, I have Paula and I have Randy as my lead people. And you can see, I actually have moved some things around because of the way that I had created this originally. But as I go down, I can see that everybody has at least one color in this. So that is what the ultimate goal is, is that between 400 centimorgans and down to 90 centimorgans, everybody has one color. One of the things that you might see though, is you might see that, hey, there's a couple of people that have two colors, like Thomas here. Or there's other people, like our first cousins, that have maybe even three colors. Depending on how many total colors you have, really will depend on the groups. Now, the leads method is ideally made so that you're gonna come up with four colors, which represent one of each of your four grandparents. In order to do that, each one of your lead people need to be second cousins of you. And you need to have enough other second and third cousins to form a nice group so that they can separate out. The other thing is, is each of your four grandparents needs to not be related to the other grandparent. Now I'll admit, I very rarely come up with a leads chart that has just four colors. In the next video, I am going to show you how you can take this basic chart with these basic groups and add some information in order to make it more useful for your research. But this is a quick way that you can divide up your matches into groups so that you know which matches you should be researching together, as opposed to just trying to figure out what this huge match list actually means. Now, if you have questions about the leads method chart, put it in the comments below. If you haven't thought about joining our channel, click on that join button down below and you can see some of the perks and extra videos and training that you will get being a member of Family History Fanatics Extra.